it's now been 15 days since my operation and um, a little bit more than a week since the last video I posted and um, I hope you enjoyed that video because for me it was uh, very symbolic and uh, it represented lots of different aspects of, of what I've been through for this surgery, um, both in the short term and the long term. Long term, sort of, with my life and with the last few years of my transition, and short term with the, in the more literal sense, getting up and walking has been a big deal, and um, being back back to feeling like a, uh, a regular human being again has been really nice. So I've been at the hotel here for about 10 days, I think, um, maybe nine. And um, I'm walking on my own. I'm My appetite is back, um, so I'm getting a little bit of a tummy again. Um, my, um, my dilation routine is twice a day. So once in the morning and once in the evening for about 40, 45 minutes. Um, each session, I'm spending resting on the bed and dilating. Um, so dilating is um, like, you know, you have all, you have your new vagina, your neo vagina, and it's made of the stretched out skin that comes from your groin area and different parts. and. Uh, I think a lot of it, that in Saporn's technique, I think a lot of the skin that's used for the inside of the vagina is comes from the scrotum, the scrotal skin. So um, that skin has been, you know, stretched way out and um, sort of reconfigured and stitched together up in there. I know I'm being real graphic, right? It's like, mm. <laughs> um, and uh, so this this skin, because it's been stretched out, it wants to sort of heal and contract and, and try to try to regain its its natural shape which of course is not something that I or any post-op girl wants because we are, want to enjoy our new vaginas so dilating is uh, you take a big it's basically a dildo but it's called a dilator um, it's about this long and there's different ones that porn gives and I think they're like 22 millimeters diameter um, is the medium one and uh, you know you cover it with lube you put a condom on it and then you cover it with lube and then you sort of insert it into your new vagina and you hold it there you sort of it, it, it's painful because there's still stitches in there and this and this it's still basically a wound I'm still basically walking around with an open wound in my body and um, and so when I'm inserting this dilator into the wound it's painful and, um, you know, there's a certain depth that you're supposed to achieve. Um, and you just gradually, you just gradually, you know, if this is my, if this is my, I don't know, abdomen, and this is the end of the dilator, then you just gradually push it in. It's very slow, and sometimes you have to stop and let the pain sort of be for a moment, and let the skin get stretched, and then it loosens up a little bit, and you can go a little bit further. And so you sort of follow this process of move a little bit and then get a little deeper and a little deeper until you reach your target depth. And everyone's target depth is different. My target depth turned out to be seven inches. So I'm pretty happy with that. And um, so it takes me about 10 to 15 minutes um, to, get, to get to that point. Um, and the last last inch going from six inches to seven inches is it takes the hardest it takes the longest time and it's um it's pretty t it's pretty painful and it takes it's just it's slow going I mean the pain is like a it's like a dull constant pain but it's like if uh, if your pain threshold is a health bar like in a video game then then holding it at this position just drains your life bar a little bit um, all the time so after a little bit of time it, it's pretty uncomfortable um, but it's important to do and um, the dilation changes like it becomes um, a little bit more difficult um, as 
like, you know, the tissues and the nerves are trying to reconnect. So like as the nerves are reconnecting, like you feel sharp pangs of pain just throughout the day. And then it's more sensitive down there. And over time, as the swelling goes down, then it's going to be easier to do. Um, and as the skin sort of, or as the wound sort of is constantly reminded that it's supposed to be the size that I keep dilating it to, it's eventually going to give up and just try to stay closer to that. Um, and so it'll get easier over time, but like it's really important for me and for any post-op transsexual woman to to really take dilating seriously. Um, otherwise, you end up back in the hospital with another operation, usually one that involves uh, a colonoscopy. And I mean, I don't particularly want a part of my anus inside uh, inside my vagina, so I don't really uh, want to, and I don't want to be back in the hospital. So um, I'm I'm taking the time that I need to do this, and I've I've got a it's actually time for me to start soon. So I'm gonna do that after this video. It's my evening session. Um, there's also you know there's a lot of care. Uh, that you have to provide to it. There's different creams that you have to use. I've been constantly wearing a pad in my panties because, you know, there's stuff leaking, like the skin is healing, like the, the, the incisions are coming together and the stitches are falling out a little bit and there's like, you know, fluid coming out of all of these places. So it's like, um, it's like I'm, I feel like I'm making up for lost time with having gone, you know, what, 15 years since puberty without having a period. Um, and so, you know, it's basically, I, I walk around and I feel like constantly sort of wet and a little bit in pain and a little bit uncomfortable down there. Um, but it is tolerable and it is pretty wonderful. Like, I can't really describe how, um, how things feel different like in here like I can describe how it feels down there but and I can I can say that uh, you know it is different than sort of what I imagined I guess everything is like the way I imagined my vagina would feel was sort of like it was almost like I imagined my vagina would be sort of at the base of my penis um, but it's sort of like much much closer to my to my anus and um, <laughs> like how I do this when I'm talking about the anus anus, vagina, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm, and unless you can't tell, I'm totally, I've totally lost a lot of like uh, inhibitions about talking about genitals. So don't be surprised if you hear the word vagina coming out of my mouth a lot these days. Um, but I think my vagina is beautiful. I think it's really amazing. I look at myself in the mirror and I just, I still sort of have to take a second look, like, oh my god, like, this is, this is right, like, this, finally, like, this feels good, this feels right. And, um, it's like I'm, I don't really think I realized how much insecurities that I felt, um, about, you know, myself, and especially my self-expression, uh, I don't, I didn't realize how much of these things were rooted in the fact that I had a penis. Um, even though I felt like no one w could really see it, like I hid it pretty well, but like knowing that I had it and knowing that I could feel it and being reminded of it, like every time sort of my testicles would move around, um, I'm free from that. And uh, it is like... <laughs> Just like in my last video, it's like opening your arms and having the light of the whole world exposed to you for the first time. And it is freeing and it is joyous. And I am so blessed and grateful to have been able to go through this. Um, but I know it was right for me. And I was confident that it was right for me before I went into it because, you know, it's also pretty scary to, to change your body in such a drastic way. Um, so I guess life at this hotel has been lovely. You know, there's been like Dr. Saporn is, is working every day, um, doing surgery pretty much every day. So there are a lot of patients that come and go on a pretty regular basis. Like it's kind of like a shifting group of women. Um, so in the time that I've been here, I've probably seen about 10 girls leave. 
and um, about 10 girls come in um, and they, they've all been so cool, uh, really, really good people to know from around the world and uh, from Australia and Iran and Turkey and there's another American girl and uh, Germany. So it's just, there's lots of different people here and it's like it's this big shared experience and we all feel connected, I think, in a, in a pretty special way. Um, and I think that that's, I think that because of there's so many girls here at any given time, I think that that's really special, um, a really special part of, of being one of the patients of Dr. Zipporn. Um And yeah, the, I'm getting less uh, less scared of sort of wandering out into the world around here. Like last night we went out, for, or no, tonight, we went out for a little walk and did a little shopping at this mall and um, then went and got these ice creams. And um, it's like, I don't know if I talked about this in, the pa in my previous videos for my SRS series, but um, you know, I walked around this area before my surgery. Like I was here for a weekend before my surgery and um, you know, people stare. People stare because I have light skin, and they stare because I'm tall, and they stare because I think they're like, hey, look at that transsexual girl. Because this area is, I guess, known for for having a lot of trans girls coming in and out. And today, tonight, at the at the ice cream place and at the at the mall, they still stare. Um, the difference is that I just, I don't care as much, like, it doesn't affect me as much, like, I, I don't have anything to hide anymore, you know, like, I'm not ashamed of my body at all, like, I'm, I'm not concerned about, like, oh god, is my, you know, is my, is my junk shifting around in my panties, like, do I have to fix this thing, it's like, I, I know that I have a little bit of a, of a hobble, because, you know, you have to keep, your walking is a little bit limited while you're healing, so, um, it's like I know that they know who I am and what I am. They don't know who I am. They know what I am. At least I feel like they do. And um, I just don't care. And uh, I'm, I'm drawing strength and I hope providing strength to the girls that I'm with. That like we are, we all own our identity, our identities. And we all live our identities to the fullest extent that we can. And um, you know, there's girls of all different kinds of sexual orientations here, and it's like we can just all get along and talk. And like, I'm the super feminist, like <laughs> super queer lesbian, and like there's lots of straight girls, and uh, you know, there's sort of reserved girls, and there's girls that are way out there, and girls that have had lots of different kinds of surgeries, and girls that have just this is their first surgery. Um, but it's been nice to have this little community here. And um, it makes me wish that uh, that the YouTube community could be more two-way. Um, I feel that there are a lot of people out there that, um, that I've been able to talk to, but I haven't been able to listen to. And it makes me sad, um, but it's the way life is, and I'm, I'm thinking about what to do about it. And... Um, and recently, I'm, I'm very inspired by people who are doing more response videos. And uh, I think there's power in that. There's power in communication. And given the format that we are all using here on YouTube, I think that it's, uh, it's something I should take more of an advantage of. But I'm also still taking it easy. You know, there's some days when I just don't have a lot of energy. There's some days where I feel a little bit depression because my hormones levels have been all crazy and, you know, some days really it's hard to dilate. Um, and so, you know, and it's still, it's still tough. Like, this is not a walk in the park. It is like a walk through a snake-filled desert. Um, but it's, uh, it's just another thing that's making me stronger. Um, for living through it. And uh, I think that that's about all I have for now. So I'm going to take care of my business and I'm going to try to check in with y'all at least one more time before I leave. Um, and then when I get back, 
is when I'll be posting all of these. So you'll get these videos in a, in a very condensed time frame. But trust me, it's been a month of my life. So <laughs> even if it's only like a few, you know, a few minutes or an hour of yours, it's been a month of my life. Um, and you can even see some of my supplies, like th that mirror I use, that's a box of rubber gloves, and this little thing right here, that's a box of, uh, or a bag of, of pads, of panty liners. So, and there's like more things, like right down there, that you can't see, it's like creams and condoms and stuff, but, um, I'm not gonna show you dilation. I might talk about it more, but it's, this is not show and tell. <laughs> It's just tell. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you for being part of this experience with me and thank you for sticking with me. Um, just thank you all. I, I really feel great. And I wish that I could help you feel great too. So um, see you next time.